Today I was dealing with the clinical applicability of prophylactic surgery for women who have high risk of breast cancer. The research is less solid than we would like. There is a great deal of information. Much of it is clinical, series-based, rather than uh, based on randomized clinical trials, which would give us better evidence than we would like. For women with a known mutation of BRCA1 or BRCA2 who clearly are at greatly increased risk, there are really only three approaches that we can take to lower their risk of death from breast cancer. And the first is excellent surveillance. And we talked about what makes it easy or hard to survey these women. But we have identified that MRI imaging greatly increases the sensitivity of early detection of breast cancer in this group of women. It's not as specific as mammography, but this is a high-risk group, so the greater specificity is hugely advantageous. Secondly, we can use chemo prevention to lower the risk of breast cancer, even though it's still very high. But we would not have expected uh, oophorectomy to be dramatically beneficial, particularly in the BRCA1 patients, who are mostly thought of as estrogen receptor negative patients but oophorectomy lowers their risk by half. And in fact, if it's done before 40, by two-thirds. The BRCA1, just as much as the BRCA2 patients. It was not quite as surprising then when tamoxifen turns out to be also dropping the risk by about half in this group of patients who are BRCA1 or BRCA2. So we have effective ways of lowering risk although when you start with a lifetime risk of 80 or 85 percent, cutting that in half still leaves you with a very high risk. Across the world, the question is, should these women have prophylactic mastectomy? It clearly will dramatically lower their risk of breast cancer, almost eliminate it. On the other hand, there's a high price to giving up both one's breasts. So immediate reconstruction with really good techniques, skin-sparing mastectomy, lowers the cost to the patient in terms of aesthetics and body image. On the other hand, we don't need to do it instantly. We didn't know that tamoxifen and aromatase inhibitors would make the big difference that they had 10 years ago. And who knows what new things we may have in three to five years. So that I think if a woman's willing to wait a year or two or three, two things happen. One, we may have better ways of preventing breast cancer. And two, she isn't making a rushed decision that's irreversible. We can't put her original breast back on. So it, it allows a thoughtful approach to prevention. And do you have any sort of personal highlights other than your own research? Uh, it's all over the San Antonio uh, Symposium this year. Uh, it's a fun symposium always. And we're getting a lot of challenging new information uh, some of which is not at all surprising, but confirming. But there are other studies, such as the one just presented a few minutes ago, suggesting that even isolated tumor cells and sentinel nodes may carry significant increased risk. I'm not sure I'll believe it without seeing it in other populations, but it's very provocative work.